Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adams Memorial Library in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I'm Ms. Karen, and I'm the head of the Children's Department here. What I think makes Adams Memorial Library special are the people, our patrons, the staff, everybody in the community. But Latrobe has had two extra special community members, Arnold Palmer and Fred Rogers, and they've always been really good friends to the library. So when you come into the children's room, you can look for our lion chair. This was donated to the children's room by Arnold Palmer and his daughters in memory of Winnie Palmer. And a lot of people, when they get their first library card, like to get the picture taken sitting in the chair. So that makes it special. But another person who came from Latrobe is Mr. Rogers. And we have the display case in the hall with lots of Mr. Rogers stuff in it. So let me show you that also. When you come in, you'll see Mr. Rogers on the door to the children's room. So make sure you stop and say hi to him there. We're in the basement of the library, but when you come in, ordinarily, these friends are upstairs. So you can stop and say hi to Daniel Tiger, Katarina Kitty Cat, Miss Elena, and we also have O the Owl and Prince Wednesday. These were made by the Eastern Westmoreland Career and Technology Center, and they're here to welcome you to the library too. This is a case with some things from Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers dinosaur replica, a train, Mr. Rogers train car. This is a copy of the yearbook from the year that Mr. Rogers graduated. He graduated from Latrobe High School and it's open to his picture. We have a trolley, some puppets from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, some books that Mr. Rogers wrote, some old album covers, DVDs, so even though Mr. Palmer and Mr. Rogers are no longer with us, they, they still continue to be great friends to the library to this day. Here in Latrobe, we like to make new friends too, like Molly of Denali. Here she is right back here. Molly is a 10-year-old Alaskan native vlogger who lives in a village called Kaya. And one of the things that Molly really likes to do is watch for birds. So I was gonna share a story with you today called Crane Song. Molly of Denali's Crane Song. Crane Song is based on a television episode written by Princess Disraeli Johnson. Hey everyone, it's Molly. There she is. My dad and I are going on a trip with my friend Nina. Nina is a journalist. She takes pictures and writes about nature. Dad and I are going to help Nina with a story about tracking baby sandhill cranes. Cranes are one of my favorite birds. To track cranes, scientists carefully put metal bands on the legs of adorable baby cranes. The bands help keep track of where the cranes go. I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's Nina. She looks like an astronaut. I'm supposed to look like I'm a crane, Nina explains, so I won't scare the birds away. There, when she blames anything, she looks like a bird. Let's see if the cranes think so. A scientist named Dr. Antigone is coming on the trip too. My job is to hand her banding tools when she catches baby cranes. Let's get going, says dad. Those baby cranes won't wait forever. Once we're at the lake, we have to be very quiet. We don't want to scare the cranes. But when we get close, I hear slap, slap, slap. The noise scares the birds away. A beaver is slapping his tail on the water. We're too close to his home, so he's trying to scare us away. What can we do now? Dad has a suggestion. He says beavers love to eat birch tree saplings. A sapling is a young tree. So we put saplings out for the beaver. That will keep them busy. Let's go ban some cranes, I say. We approach the cranes again, but when we get close, I hear, Achoo! Ooh, Dr. Antigone sneezes super loud, and the cranes run away again. We decide to go to our campsite. Dr. Antigone needs to rest and have some tea. Why do we need to track cranes? I ask Dr. Antigone. 
to learn how cranes migrate, says Dr. Antigone, showing me a map. Cranes fly to Alaska in the summer to have their babies up here where Molly lives. And then they fly south in the winter down to Texas and Mexico. If we don't band any cranes, we won't know if they made it to where they're going. Just then, I think of who can help. I video call Grandpa Matt. Banding cranes is not easy, I tell him. Do you have any ideas? Try talking in their language, Grandpa Matt suggests. When I was a kid, I called to birds by singing their songs and dancing their dances. I laugh, trying to picture Grandpa Nat doing a bird dance. I gotta see that, I say. Grandpa Nat stands up. He makes a noise, and it sounds like a sandhill crane. Grrrr! Grrrr! Grandpa Nat spreads his arms like their wings, and then he hops around, and it looks like fun. The next day, we try again. Astronaut suits? Check. I say, beavers fed? Check. Dr. Antigone feeling better? Check. Next, I show everyone how to sing and dance like a crane. The crane seemed to like it. A baby crane comes right up to us. I hand Dr. Antigone a soft bag. Dr. Antigone gently places it on the baby crane's head. That's so it doesn't get scared. Dr. Antigone places a band around the baby crane's leg and gently tightens it so the band can't fall off. The baby crane is banded. Dr. Antigone removes the bag and the baby crane waddles away. See you again, Ja, little crane, I call. That's one crane banded and a bunch more to go. Time for another crane dance. Now, Molly really, really likes watching birds, and she even included some tips for watching birds here in this, this book. So these are Molly's tips on how to be a thoughtful bird watcher. So Molly says, I am a big fan of birds, and lucky for me, Alaska is home to all sorts of birds. Cranes, chickadees, puffins, and eagles, to name a few. So here's how you can become a bird watcher. Step one, use the right tools you might want to get binoculars. So you can look at the cranes up close by still keeping your distance from them so they don't get scared. And you can also use a field guide to help you identify the birds you see. You can look online or you can get a field guide from your library. Step two, practice listening. Every bird has its own unique call, Molly says. And it's easier to identify birds when you can see and hear them. So you can see which bird and listen for the song and see what kind of sound they make. Step three, bring company. Bird watching is a really fun activity, but it's even better with friends. Molly also has a field guide to birds. And if you would like, you can print it out and use it yourself too. So here's Molly, Den Molly of Denali's Field Guide to Birds by Molly and you. And Molly included some of the birds she's seen, like a robin, which you've probably seen too. So she has a picture of the robin, what it sounds like, where it lives, and some facts about robins. Molly has also seen Canada goose, great horned owl, you may have heard those, and rock pigeon, you may have heard those too, or seen those. But you can also print out papers for yourself to use for the birds that you see. And you can draw a picture. You can describe the bird here if you want to go to the internet and find a picture or take a picture yourself and then print it out. You can put your bird here. If you've heard it, you can say what it sounds like, where it lives, where you saw it, and some interesting facts. So you can print as many of these as you want. You can keep looking for birds and just keep adding them. If you would like, you can put these in a binder instead of stapling it, so you can keep adding to it. And then you can write everything down in the index in the back. Molly's already seen the robin, the goose, the horned owl, and the pigeon, so you can just take it from there. So we hope you will 
join us in doing this activity this summer. Looking for birds is a great way to spend your summer. So thanks so much for visiting Adams Memorial Library today. The key word for our library is birds. So don't forget to write birds down on your Library Explorer passport. So thank you so much for visiting. Thank you. And as Molly would say, Masi Cho. Thank you.